So in the last video, I went over how to build a quantum teleportation circuit in IBM Quantum Composer and Qiskit. And in this video, I just want to go over a little bit of the math behind what makes quantum teleportation work. Um, and so I wasn't sure how to make this video um, because my handwriting is very atrocious. Um, so I decided to write everything out in LaTeX. Uh, that way it's easier to read. And if anybody wants the notes, um, I can give them the notes. Uh, all right, so with that, um, just a little bit of review of notation and definitions. If we have some generic wave function state, uh, we can write it in bracket notation as ket psi equals alpha, alpha ket 0 plus beta ket 1, where uh, 0 and 1 are the basis states. Um, and alpha, the absolute value of alpha squared equals the probability of observing a zero state, and uh, the absolute value of beta squared equals the probability of observing a one state. And because of those, those are the only two options, uh, absolute value of alpha squared plus the absolute value of beta squared equals one, satisfying the Born rule. Uh, the next thing that we need to know is the Bell state entanglement, or the Bell entanglement state. Uh, so there's actually four Bell states. Uh, in this one, we're using uh, Bell state 0, 0, which corresponds to two qubits which have been entangled such that they're either in the bo they're either both in the zero state or they're both in the one state. Uh, so if we measure one of the qubits, we automatically know what the other one is uh, because they're entangled. Uh, next, we have the poly X and poly Z rotation operators. The poly X operator acting on a wave state just uh, sw it switches the coefficients for the basis, the base state vectors, and uh, the Z operator negates the one basis state vector. Um, and these operators are their own inverses. So if you apply the X operator twice, you get the original wave state. And uh, if you apply the Z operator twice, you also get the original wave state. Next is the Hadamard operator. Um, so the Hadamard operator acting on the zero base state uh, produces a superposition of zero and one states with equal probability of being observed. And the Hadamard operator acting on the one basis state produces a similar uh, uh, output, except that the one base state has a negative sign in front of it. Uh, but it, they both correspond to an equal probability of observing a zero or a one. Um, it's also good to know that the Hadamard operator is its own inverse. So if you apply the Hadamard operator twice, you get the original uh, state vector back. OK, so next, when we have multi-qubit systems, uh, such as this one, the way we write that uh, to represent the entire system is a tensor product of the individual qubits. So for example, if we have a qubit in state 0 and in state 1, uh, uh, if, if we have two qubits, one in zero and one in one, uh, the tensor product would look like this. And the overall system of the, the zero, one ket could be represented as this vector form. And so these elements in the vector correspond to uh, zero, 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 one, one, zero, and one, one. Um, and some useful properties about the tensor product, it's associative, so we can group uh, the terms however we want using parentheses and such. But it's important to note that the tensor product does not commute. So A tensor B does not necessarily equal B tensor A. Um, and so the way it's going to look for our notation, uh, so, you know, suppose this is Q0. Uh, we have, suppose we have three qubits. All right, so I is Q0, J is Q1, K is Q2. Um, if we if we want to represent the overall system, we could just write it as a tensor product. Uh, but usually we're going to drop the product symbol, the x symbol. And this is kind of an implied tensor product. Um, and then just using the associativity rule, we can kind of group these together however we want. OK, so on to the circuit. <clears throat> OK, so recall last time uh, we have three qubits. Uh, qubit 0 and qubit 1 belong to Alice, and uh, qubit 2 belongs to Bob. And the way that this works is Alice wants to send this qubit 0 to Bob, 
and she does that by sending it through qubit 1 and because qubit 1 is entangled with qubit 2 uh, Bob will get it uh, on qubit 2 um, and qubit 1 and qubit 2 are entangled in the bell state so we have some initial wave function for the entire system uh, psi 0 which is just going to be equal to the tensor product of psi this is qubit 0 and the, in the qubits uh, 1 and 2 respectively so by convention um, we're reading left to right so this would be qubit 0 and this would be qubit 1 and qubit 2 um, so that's just kind of the, the convention that we're using if we expand out these terms uh, in bracket notation we get this is the original wave this is the original psi state and this is the bell state bell zero zero and we can just uh, multiply out the terms uh, just keeping in mind that this uh, the, the first two qubits belong to Alice so this would be Alice's qubit this would be Alice's qubit um, this would be Bob's qubit uh, this would be Alice's qubit this is Bob's qubit uh, and so on this is Alice's qubit Alice's Bob's Alice and Bob's so Bob's qubit is all the way on the right so the first thing we do is we apply a controlled knot which flips Q1 uh, when Q0 is in the one basis state um, the way that looks is um, so when Q0 is in the one state so this term here we're gonna flip Q1 so this 0 is gonna become a 1 oops this one is going to become a zero and nothing's going to happen over here because q0 is not in a one base state so when we when we do that bit flip we get something that looks pretty much the same except uh, this is now a one and this is now a zero the next thing we do is we apply hadmard operator to q0 uh, remember that's the that's the qubit all the way on the left so just substituting in the uh, equations for the hadamard uh, this zero state becomes a superposition of zero and one uh, and I've pulled out the one over square root two out in front so now we now have a one half out in front uh, and then also the Hadamard applied to this one base state gives zero minus one uh, basis states so that's pretty much uh, all we did there uh, we can rearrange these terms uh, to get uh, a little bit more clear of an idea of what's going on um, basically what I did was I pulled out Alice's qubits out in front and left Bob's qubit in parentheses so that that's how they're factored and again we just did that based on the associativity property of uh, tensor product which is just if you if you have something here uh, you can just pull out this qubit one and group it with qubit zero uh, which is exactly what we've done and that leaves uh, Bob's qubits uh, in the parentheses uh, by themselves and the reason that we do this is because uh, basically what's going to happen is Alice could measure when Alice measures uh, qubit 0 and qubit 1 uh, she's going to get one of four different measurements if she measures 0 0 uh, then Bob will get this uh, wave state which is the correct wave state that's that's the wave state that he wants but if Alice measures a 0 and a 1, Bob's wave state is going to have the coefficients swapped. So he needs to apply a poly x operator to swap them back. And uh, if Alice measures a 1 and a 0, then uh, Bob needs to apply a poly z operator to flip the uh, 1 state vector to a positive sign. And if Alice measures a 1 and a 1, then Bob needs to apply both a uh, poly x rotation followed by a poly z rotation um, so basically we need to based on Alice's measurements we need to relay that uh, information to Bob so that he knows the correct post uh, operations to apply on q2 to get the desired wave function and again this is just kind of the same thing um, but it's written out in matrix form so if Alice measures a 0 0 then Bob has the correct qubit state if Alice measures a 0 1 then Bob needs to apply the poly x gate and this is the poly x gate in matrix notation and this you can see that this swaps the the qubits uh, or that swaps the coefficients back to the correct way uh, if Alice measures a 1 0 she, uh, 
Bob needs to apply a poly Z gate, uh, which, which negates the beta coefficient. And if Alice measures a 1, 1, then Bob needs to apply a poly X followed by a poly Z. And that uh, it switches the coefficients and then negates the beta. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, that's uh, the quantum teleportation circuit. Um, let me know if you found this helpful, uh, or if there's any suggestions you, you would like to make, please let me know. Um, so, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching.